Keep it clean. I ain't feel like waiting till tomorrow to talk about my post game thoughts. So we doing it right here, right now. Plus, I think tomorrow may be a little busy, but we'll get there when we get there. Anyway, the Ravens, they defeated those Cleveland Browns in the game today. Now, it was expected that the Ravens were going to face Deshaun Watson last minute decision. They were like, no, Deshaun Watson ain't playing. And the Ravens faced a rookie, rookie fifth round pick. DTR and this had made a lot of us Ravens fans a little more nervous than actually going against Deshaun Watson and I think a lot of it had to do with the game last week against Gardner Minshew because it's like man and I had even tweeted it out and said Ravens don't make the same mistake twice losing to a backup quarterback but uh, he was not just a backup quarterback he was a backup rookie quarterback and oh boy oh man they made him look like a rookie. The Ravens defense did their thing all game. They were smothering him all game. They forced a couple of interceptions. Uh, he actually, what, they caught three interceptions because Brandon Stevens called a tip drill. Shout out to Arthur Millette. Arthur Millette was having himself a game today, a game, uh, because the pass, it was a pass, I forgot who it was intended for. DTR threw it, a little behind. Arthur Millette reached back and pop, knocked it up. Brandon Stevens said, huh? And it came right to him Interception And then he was like Hold up Once he caught the ball And he realized he caught it He said hold up I used to play running back I know what to do Whoop Made a spin move And, and took it back And it was a beautiful Interception return Beautiful play And then There was one that Geno Stone caught uh, Geno Stone almost had another one Earlier too But cause he was at the right place Right time It was one of those kind of picks But uh, he caught that pick And took it back for a little chunk It was a better return Than what he got uh, Against the Bengals It could have been a big But anyway uh, and then to close, man, I was so happy for him, man. To close out the game, super duper Kyle Hammy. Kyle Hamilton got the pick at the very end. I know a lot of us would have been upset if the Ravens would have gave up a touchdown on that last play. Because they'd have been like, really, man? They really gave up a touchdown? But they didn't. I was so happy, man. I was so happy. Defense, they get all up. Three points. This defense. Missing starter after starter after starter after starter after starter. This season, this defense has been amazing. They have continued to be amazing. And this is without a pass rush. Well, without a consistent pass rush. Because my boy, who I, I predicted this game, he was going to get two sacks and at least one forced fumble. And he had it. He had it. Jadavian Clowney. It's still my guy. That's still my guy. But he like... He be winning. Like, every time he go against an offensive tackle, or even if they put him on the inside, he wins. He don't do nothing but win. But then when, it, when it's time to get to the quarterback, he just, I don't know what be happening there. I don't know what goes on when, when he gets to the quarterback because he just misses. That's when he just, everything just goes out the window and he, he keeps on missing. I don't know what it is. They, they got to fix it, though, because Jadavian Clowney, like somebody in, a, in, a, in our live stream, they said, man, Jadavian Clowney, he could have got his incentives by now because he could have. But he keep missing all these sacks, but it's all good, man. He'll start closing real, real soon. He just got to get a little more in the groove with things. Kyle Vannoy, who just got signed this week, um, he almost forced uh, an interception because it was on a pass that DTR threw. Kyle Vannoy jumped up and swatted it, and Patrick Queen almost, almost had to pick. And speaking of Patrick Queen, what a beautiful segue to Patrick Queen getting that nasty sack. Patrick Queen just been flying all over the field, and we talked about it during the stream. Patrick Queen price, it just keeps going up. So whether it's going to be with the Baltimore Ravens or it's going to be with somebody else, Patrick Queen price keeps going up. Somebody whose price is very high already, and he got paid, Roquan Smith. He was all over the field, everywhere, literally, literally everywhere on that field today, making big hits. Hey, he said it, and he backed it up. Now, again, they didn't go against Deshaun Watson, but still, they, they can only play who's in front of them, and Ravens defense took care of business, but Roquan Smith was all over that field, all over that field. Look, just looking at the actual numbers um, for the Browns, uh, DTR, he went 19 for 36, uh, have threw for 121 yards, three interceptions, got sacked four times. Uh, oh, another one of those sacks was by Matt Abike. They were getting pressure on him a lot, a whole lot they were getting pressure on him, so that was, that was a good thing. Uh, their running game, uh, Browns ran the ball 25 times for 93 yards, averaged 3.7 yards a carry. My favorite run from the Browns came from Elijah Moore, where they, would, they, they start pulling out trick plays early. Like, very early. And Elijah Moore, he wanted it bad. Then he was like, you know what? If I cut back around, maybe I'll get something. Then he's like, no. If I cut back around, maybe I'll get And he just kept going backwards and backwards and backwards. And it was just, it was ugly. It was ugly. Um, but, yeah, Ravens defense did their thing. David Njoku, uh, who had burned his face or something, burned maybe a little bit of his hands too. He actually led the Browns in receiving. So how about that? Uh, he had six catches for 46 yards. 
But that was really it, man. The next highest guy, two catches for 20 yards. Jerome Ford, the running back, five catches for 19 yards. Amari Cooper, the, one of the, the really good receiver, one catch for 16 yards. So, again, those numbers probably would have been a little bit different had Deshaun Watson actually played. But, again, you can only play who's in front of you. And Ravens, they handled business, and they've been handling business on defensive side of the ball very well uh, this season thus far. Um, special teams, much better special teams than uh, the past couple of weeks. Because, uh, again, a couple of weeks ago, they gave up the punt return to, for a touchdown against the Bengals. Uh, last week, they gave up a couple of nice returns to the Colts. But this week, it was a lot of nothing. Uh, Duvernay, he tried a couple of times to get some punt returns. They didn't really get too much of nothing. Jordan Stout, we got to call him Ed Jordan from now on. Jordan Stout, he set the Ravens up nice because he, he got a couple of punts that were within the Browns' 10-yard line. Uh, so shout out to Jordan Stout. Continue to do your thing. Continue to elevate and just get even better. Remember, guys, it's only a second year. It's only a second year. But now to the offense because the offense, boy, this was what a lot of people, a lot of us were scared of for because we're going against this Browns defense. This Browns, I think, what weren't they the number one defense, I believe? But they have been breaking all these records, holding all these teams to three points and whatnot. But now the tables have been flipped. They've been reversed because the Ravens held them to three points. Now the Browns defense did show why the Browns defense is the Browns defense, that pass rush, because they had gotten Lamar a couple times. He got sacked for three times for 21 yards. Miles Garrett. Now, hey, Miles Garrett, your secret is out. We know how you be getting all them sacks. You be jumping off sides. We caught you this this week. We caught you. But no, Miles Garrett is still an, an amazing player. The dude is a beast. He was dogging Patrick McCarry. Uh, Morgan Moses, he ended up getting hurt. Uh, he left for the game. Hopefully, it's nothing long term. I know some people thinking it could possibly be a torn peck. We'll see. Hopefully, they're all wrong. Um, then Daniel Falele came in. He was getting dogged a bit too. And just that, that Browns defensive line, they are serious. Uh, Ravens, they had to use a screen game sometimes because the, the pressure just would come in so much. They were in the backfield a lot. Even when they didn't sack Lamar, they were all over Lamar, and it, it was just a lot for the Ravens to handle. But it's crazy when on the plays, on some plays where Miles Garrett actually looked like a normal person, he, the, the Ravens executed well, and, and they, they made big plays happen out of it. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is nice. But we didn't see too much of Miles Garrett looking like a normal person because he is not a normal person. The man is amazing. Um, but the Ravens, Lamar Jackson. Uh, early on in this game, he said, hold up, I'm about to do a repeat of last week, but I'm going to add a little extra to it because he got his two rushing touchdowns uh, early on in this game. Uh, but then Mark Andrews, that first touchdown of Mark Andrews, ooh, Lamar Jack, that's that trust. That's that big trust they got with each other. Uh, Mark Andrews, he, he threw it into, it, it was two and a half Browns over there because one of them was, was kind of over there, but he kind of wasn't, so it was, but it was two guys that was over there. Lamar put it up for him. Mark Andrews came down with it for the touchdown. Then on the second touchdown to Mark Andrews, Lamar, Mark Andrews was kind of jealous of Zay. He like, man, Zay been getting all this shine. He been getting all this yak. He been making all these people miss. Watch this. Let me do the same thing. And Lamar threw it to him. Mark Andrews made a couple people miss, ran it in there for a touchdown. It's a beautiful thing. Now, Lamar had almost thrown another touchdown earlier, uh, but Nelly, it was a perfect pass. Perfect catch by Nelly, but just, ooh, he just missed one foot. Just one foot. But it was nice to see, again, the diversifying of Lamar Jackson as a quarterback and them just really bringing out so much more in Lamar Jackson because they had him, that, that wheel route to, uh, to Melvin Gordon, that was a thing that I, I don't remember us seeing that uh, at, at all, if at all. And if we did, I don't remember the last time we saw it. Um, the the again the pass to Nelson Aguilar that was a beautiful one, uh, just a lot man he just throwing that ball all over then Zay Flowers that pass where Lamar was rolling he rolled out and he was looking 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 and Zay Flowers said hey I'm open down here Lamar threw it to him and Zay Flowers caught it he tried to cut back but he was out of bounds already and oh if he would have cut back that would have been a touchdown, um but yeah man it, it, it's it's a beautiful thing. Uh, to see now hopefully next next week we get uh, Rashad Bateman back and Odell Beckham Jr. back but we'll see Odell Beckham Jr. was running on the field before the game uh, so they say he was looking good but again hopefully next week against the Steelers uh, he can get it done now I know a lot of Ravens fans were um, very upset with the play calling uh, they were upset with the play calling when the Ravens when it was a close game and they were upset with the play calling uh, when it was an 18 point game when the score was uh, 21-3, people say, oh, they're conservative, they're conservative, they're conservative. But I was thinking at the same time, like, look, like, they were in firm control of DTR, of Brown's quarterback. They were in firm control. Like, they, like, they controlled the game literally from start to finish. They didn't have any fears. There was a couple times here and there was like, oh, 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 but no, they fixed everything. Like, Mike McDonald, they ran this game. The defense ran this game for sure. So I, I think with the Baltimore Ravens, why I understand like people they don't want the Ravens to be conservative because it gives a lot of flashbacks, and I get that. But in this game, the way that the defense controlled it, like they were set. They were straight. 
the offense was straight. They were like, oh, we ain't got to worry about nothing. So they, they ain't really had to do too much of anything. Um, so I, I'm not mad with the play calling or what. And I know there was some times I was like, oh, what was that? But since they had so much control, they ain't had to pull out everything. They ain't had to show everything. They had to show their whole hand and whatnot because they remained in control throughout the entire game. Um, Lamar Jackson now, something that he didn't control <laughs> was a couple of them fumbles. Oh, man, when, when the Ravens clean up the fumble, oh. They're going to be unstoppable. When they clean up the fumbles, and they get healthy too. But they're going to be unstoppable because when they don't fumble the ball, they make great stuff happen. But they got to fix the fumbles, though. Lamar first fumble, I couldn't put that on him because Patrick McCarry just got beat from jump, literally from jump from the beginning of the play. Uh, Miles Garrett said, uh, Pat McCar- uh, move out the way, and he went straight to Lamar Jackson. The, Lamar ain't had no time to do anything. But the other fumble where Lamar Jackson was tr- handing it off to Justice Hill, Lamar Jackson, he let it go way too early. And instead of putting it in Justice Hill's chest or his stomach, he dropped the ball before it even got to Justice Hill. Then Justice Hill was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? And that ended up being a fumble. So, got to clean that up. So, that's still an issue. So, while this, the score is pretty, 28-3, but the game, is still, it still has some stuff where they, they still got to clean up. Now, again, with the Ravens and the offense, Lamar said, hey, we, we can't peak too early. They, they definitely ain't peak yet. Because the offense, hey, 28 points, beautiful. Two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns. Beautiful, lovely, loved it. But that ain't no peak offense out there right now. It ain't no peak offense. And Munkin did tell us. He told us in, I think, early in August. He said, hey, we ain't good yet. And, yeah, we, they getting there. But it's, it's definitely a work in progress. But, yeah, this was a uh, good game from the Ravens. Good, complete game from the Ravens. All three phases did their thing. Uh, and for them to be able to win 28-3 and still have some stuff to clean up, still have some stuff that they need to work on, still have some issues that they need to fix, again, that's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful when you can have issues, but you can still take care of business despite uh, whatever issues it is that you have. Uh, so shout out to the Baltimore Ravens. Next week, got the Pittsburgh Steelers, another away game against an AFC North opponent. Now, with the Bengals, they lost to the Titans today, 27-3. Great. With the Steelers, they lost to the Texans today. I don't remember what the score was, but it's great. So, Ravens, right? It's just four games, but the Ravens are atop the AFC North right now. Um, so, next week, we'll see if they go against Kenny Pickett or not. They, he did leave the game, and he didn't come back. So, hopefully, it ain't nothing serious with him. Hopefully, ain't no serious injury or anything like that. But the Ravens, injury-wise, this game... I think that's another reason why they might not have been so aggressive toward the end too much because they're like, look, we've got control of this game. We don't need to do anything crazy. Uh, we got firm control of this thing. Uh, they had already lost Morgan Moses for the game. Um, I'm, I feel like they lost somebody else too. I can't remember them off the top of my head. though. Maybe they did. Oh, Arthur Millette. They lost him a little later on in the game. But yeah, they came out this game relatively healthy. We'll get the injury updates on Morgan Moses probably later on today or tomorrow. And then some injury news on some other guys that uh, Ravens should be getting back uh, probably tomorrow. So I will see you then. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all are so great. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, so you don't miss anything because I want y'all to see every single video that we drop because I love y'all. We out.